what's going on, everyone? It is your co-host, Brandon Robinson, and you are listening to Doable Discipleship, the show that helps you grow. Today, yes, today, we're going to be airing our Easter special. Now, what our Easter special is, it's a dramatic reading of the Easter story, and it's compiled from all the Gospels. So it's not like we're just taking the account in just John and then saying, this is what it looks like in John, and this is what it looks like in Luke, or this is what it looks like in Matthew. But it's taking all of them together, compiling them into one nice, clean, smooth narrative experience. And I want to give a special shout out here to Austin Pay. He did an amazing job uh, with the readings and making it really special. And I think this is something that you can do with your family, that you can do with your small group, or you can do it alone. Um, And this is part one of that special. We're going to be releasing part two next Tuesday and part three the following Tuesday leading up to Easter. Now, speaking of Easter, I got some great news. If you are in Southern California, anywhere from Los Angeles uh, down to San Diego, great news. We are going to be opening Saddleback Church for Easter. Limited capacity is going to be outdoors, but we can be back together in the flesh with other people. If you're interested in that, All you have to do is sign up at saddleback.com slash Easter. You'll have to reserve uh, reserve a reservation at any of our campuses. All of our campuses will be be offering these Easter services. Um, But you can sign up for them at saddleback.com slash Easter. I also want to make mention of Journey with Jesus. Our Journey with Jesus trail is open at the Saddleback Rancho Capistrano campus. Uh, You can go to saddleback.com slash Journey with Jesus for directions, uh, for there's a VR experience. Rick actually teaches through each station of the cross. It's a great way just to immerse yourself in the Easter story during this season. So I highly, highly recommend checking that out. Saddleback.com slash journey with Jesus. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. Okay. Now we're going to get into part one of our Easter special. Let's do it. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare a Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat my Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus has said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. And Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink the wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here, At this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? The disciples began to ask each other, which one of them would ever do such a thing? Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. And Jesus told them, In this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. 
Who is more important? The one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course. But not here. For I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial. And just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now we want to touch quickly on the Passover here. Now the Passover is a, is a time of remembrance from this time in Israel's history when Moses is appealing to Pharaoh to let the people go out of Egypt. And Pharaoh keeps saying, no, 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 nine different times. And then the Lord says, all right, I am going to, I am going to show Pharaoh that I mean business and I am going to kill the firstborn of everybody that does not have my marker over their door. And so what what the Lord told Moses is to take the blood of a male lamb, one without blemish, and smear it over the doorposts of their houses. And when the Lord saw the blood, he would pass over that house. That's where we get the term Passover for. And what this time is, is actually it is a foreshadowing of the spotless lamb of God, of Jesus, whose blood would cover the sins of those who believe in him, causing God's judgment to pass over them. And ever since that night, the uh, Passover is something that is celebrated by Jews, but it's something that we as Christians can also still take time and remember and celebrate. We actually even have a, a small group study on Passover that you can check out too if you're if you're curious. Um, so just it's important to, to remember that Passover was a foreshadowing of what we see um, of Christ's sacrifice. Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, Then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, A person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfills the scripture that says, The one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth, 
Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, and anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, Who's he talking about? So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, It is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. Oh, you can really just feel the tension in the room as this is happening. The disciples have gathered for the Passover meal, and as they sit, Jesus identifies his betrayer. And he identifies him fairly subtly because we know that not everybody in the room suddenly realizes who Jesus is talking about or what exactly has happened here, but we know that a few of the disciples did. The Bible tells us that Satan went into Judas and that he prompted him to go ahead and begin carrying out um, this work of betrayal. And Jesus himself says, hurry and go and do what you're going to do. Jesus knows exactly what's about to happen. We see that prior to this moment, Jesus has been very uh, sort of guarded and a little bit cryptic in his language. But as soon as Judas leaves and the betrayer is no longer in the room, there is a sense that that darkness lifts a little bit. And um, you actually see that Jesus' tone begins to change, and he starts speaking to his disciples in a way that is much more intimate and just very clear. He stops speaking so figuratively, and um, he, begins, he begins to take advantage of the moment to say all the last things that he knows he needs to tell his disciples before he leaves. And so we enter into a moment of, of brotherhood and um, really intimate, honest conversation. As soon as Judas had left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will soon give glory to the Son. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. For as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, You can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord? He asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. 
From now on you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Then we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments. I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really loved me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father, who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight all of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, Even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all of the other disciples vowed the same. Now just imagine being a, a, one of the disciples in this moment. You have Jesus, who you have been with and following for up to three years now, has, he is telling him, tonight all of you will desert me. And, and, and you're saying, wait, a I've been with you f this whole time. I have, I have followed you everywhere. I, surely I will not desert you. And it's especially we can sense that some of these disciples are, are saying, no, like this is a point of, uh, of pride for me almost, is why would I do this? I would not abandon you. I would not leave you. But surely it, it, they did not realize that that night, that very night, is when they would be put to the test. That they did not see this coming, that, that they would see Jesus, who they had been following, be taken away, be arrested, and ultimately be crucified? Are they going to uh, stand up for what they believe, or are they going to uh, desert Jesus? And that's something that we're going to jump into right now. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. But the time is coming. 
Indeed, it's here now when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. But now, he said, take your money in a traveler's bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one, for the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they replied, we have two swords among us. That is enough, he said. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation, for the Spirit is willing but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. I hope you enjoyed part one of this three-part Doable Discipleship Easter special. I know that you probably know how this story ends, but there's going to be something really powerful over the next few weeks as we read through the story together and we're reminded of these incredible truths, the truth of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. These are the events that give us hope for eternity. These are the events that promise us a future in the kingdom of God. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to join us for the next two weeks. Don't miss out. Don't miss next week's episode as we dive into part two of the Easter story. These excerpts from the New Living Translation were used by permission of Tyndale House Publishers Incorporated. All rights reserved. Product available for purchase at www.tyndale.com.